um, Chanel De Vette, um, 22 years old. Two years ago, I felt a tumor in the right side of my face and we were unsure of what it was. So we went to one of our local doctors down in Joburg and they predicted that they had to remove my salivary gland uh, and do a parotidectomy. But that was not the case. After the surgery, I ended up with facial paralysis due to a nerve being severed or they just cut too deep. And from there on for about a year, we struggled to find the right doctor to correct my face. And after sleepless nights that my mom had, she eventually found uh, Dr. Grave, who teamed up with two other amazing doctors, Dr. Hofmeyer from Joburg in Pretoria and um, Dr. Appelstadt who's also down here in the Cape. And they worked as a team to help me improve the look of my face and I'm really appreciated of it. The procedure was about, I think, seven hours long. On the 20th of September last year, that was when the operation took place and it was until May month. I had to send a video through to Dr. Greve where there was still no improvement, but I did know that it was a lengthy recovery process. And yet towards July, August, my dad started to tell me, listen, your top lip is moving. So that's when we started noticing the improvements thereof. So like my bottom lip, that one still needs a whole lot of work, but I've got improvement from my top lip and when I smile, it does start to cringe and I'm actually really happy for it. Chanel was diagnosed with a tumor in her right parotid area, in the cheek area. It was found uh, to be a, a sort of a schwannoma, which is a benign tumor that grows from the nerve sheet that surrounds nerves. And the problem with, uh, even though it's a, it's a benign tumor and not a cancerous growth, but it puts pressure on structures around it because it just keeps on growing. So it had to be removed. Nerve sheath tumors, uh, to remove them, it's actually, uh, I would say, almost impossible to not injure the nerve that that tumor surrounds. Even if you get it right to skin out that nerve out of that tumor, tumorous tissue and, and isolate it, it will be damaged and, and there's a small chance that it actually retains function. I think in those circumstances, if you know that it's this type of tumor, in some instances and in some cases it would be good to uh, do an immediate reconstruction. When you're there and, and you take the tumor out and you can actually identify the nerve ends and then do some nerve grafting immediately. In her case that was not possible so when I saw her it was about 10 months after the primary surgery and she had complete facial nerve fallout on her right side. All the five branches were involved. We decided first we're gonna try and identify the proximal end of the facial nerve according to the CT scan and the MRI was severed right there where it enters the, the mastoid area. Then we also had to identify the peripheral branches where the nerve is, is basically going into those, those five branches where the nerve is going into the muscles and we have to identify them at a level where they're identifiable so that were they big enough and where we can also still graft them. What we did, we tried to find the proximal, basically the end of the nerve that comes from the brain. It's a cranial nerve that, that, that is called facial nerve that supplies the muscles of the face and that gives you contraction and movement of the face and gives you basically facial expression and, and everything that you need to smile, to, to all, your, all your emotional movements in, in your face. So that nerve comes down from here, then it leaves the brain, it goes through the bone, behind the ear, through the mastoid bone, and we actually, uh, it was a combined approach, and a colleague of mine who's a specialist ENT surgeon that works a lot in that area, drilled this open, and we, we, we identified the nerve, and then we also tried to identify the nerve ends in the face. We find the nerve here, and then the ends where it goes into the muscle, and then we took a, a, a nerve graft from a leg, from the other side, from the left leg, the lower leg, the sural nerve, and we. what I did, I, I grafted the nerve, I, I fixed it here with, under the microscope to that end in the bone, and then it had to go all the way from here around and then into the areas where we suture those little branches so that the, the function can slowly come back through the intact end of the nerve 
that the nerve then grows slowly by half a millimeter to one millimeter a day back into the branches that we, we could identify and then re innovates the muscle. Of course, during the surgery, everything is different, but we found about two branches that were of adequate size, and then we found a very little branch. Instead of five branches, I would say, I would almost call it two and a half that we got. Then I used sural nerve graft from the left lower leg to do the, the grafting to the interposition between the proximal nerve end in the bone and those peripheral branches that we could identify. The length of that graft was about 25, 26 centimeters. We realized that we, we have to really wait a long time. And now it's, it's about a year and two months after the surgery, 14 months after the surgery, and she got some function back. Uh, the last time we, we, we spoke was in May and she didn't have any function at that stage. And then a few months later, her, her dad actually saw that there was a little bit of movement and improvement. It took almost a year before the first function is coming back and it's still improving. Now we have to wait and see and see what's what's going to come back, what's going to happen in the future and, and wait until we got no further improvement or rec recovery. And then we can see uh, how the balance of the face is, the facial muscles. Maybe we have to uh, do some other small procedures or some botulinum toxin treatments to weaken other areas so that the that the general movement and the balance of the face looks better and improved because we will probably find, as I explained before, the, the function will not, uh, there's, there's never complete return of function. There's only a, a part of the function that, that we will get back. So the other side will always be the stronger side. So we'll have to find a way to improve that further after that and also to improve synkinetic movements. So there's different modalities that we, that we can use in the future. We first want to wait and see what function is coming back. Because there was specialists that told me, sorry, it's permanent. So obviously that does get you down and you do lose self-confidence. You don't want to be in photos. You don't want to be really out in public. And so this has actually given me more confidence. And it's, yeah, it's a journey. And hopefully if someone else has gone through it, they just be positive. And I've remained strong because my parents are strong and they were always there for me and they didn't give up. So that just also helps the, the process. Uh, Chanel found me, uh, I think her mom found me because I do a lot of microsurgical procedures. I think the problem is we don't really have a lot of specialists in South Africa doing facial reanimation surgery. A lot of the procedures are done uh, with static procedures or little muscular procedures with a little pedicled flap and there's little, not much microsurgery done and, and actually trying to renovate areas. So over the years I got a lot of inquiries from Discovery because uh, I'm, I'm a, sort of a, seen as an expert in microsurgery in, in South Africa. They asked me about procedures that have been motivated to be done in America by a very famous facial reanimation surgeon. It's Dr. Aziza D. He's, um, he's got also a big website and a lot of the local patients have quotes and, and then they asked Discovery to pay for the surgery. They asked me, can it be done in South Africa? Of course it can be done here. Uh, we have good microsurgeons, we have good uh, ENT surgeons, we have people that, that know the anatomy that, that can work in the field. But because we, we also have not too many plastic surgeons, I think it's an area that, that that isn't covered very well. So I think it's important, you know, that, that, that we, we can offer this here in our country. We can do the surgery and each patient, of course, is different. We have the technical ability. We have the surgeons that are trained to do microsurgery. So we, we, we are actually situated here. We can do it in South Africa, in Cape Town. And I think that is a message that we also want to want to get out there for patients suffering of facial nerve injuries.